and we are Geeks Not Nerds. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince! <laughs> Vince, what are, we, what are we doing? We're doing the no commotion! Really? Yes. Or no, maybe we're jogging in place. While well, sitting down. That's right. With my legs crossed. <laughs> Vince, <laughs> what, what are we... Uh, I don't know what has happened in this show. What are we uh, talking about this week? We are taking a question from 123 Rock Fan. <laughs> That was mean, maybe. I don't know. But uh, from 123 fan, and he wants to know, what is the difference between a fanboy and a buff? And uh, buff, we mean like an, an enthusiast. We don't mean like a naked dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be one of those episodes, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so uh, the difference between a fanboy and a buff. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start off by saying that um, generally fanboy seems to have more of a negative connotation, right? Yeah. It's, it, is it kind of is it kind of like why why we call ourselves geeks as opposed to nerds? Yeah, because those nerds could eat it. No. I'm right. Right. We, we we should change the name of the show to um, enthusiasts, not fanboys. Hi, I'm Captain Logan, <laughs> and I'm Vince, and uh, welcome once again to another ep- exciting episode of uh, Enthusiasts, Not Fanboys. Another episode of pretentious. The Geeks Not Nerds. The podcast. The podcast. Right. Absolutely. Recommend. Well, it's funny you say that because because when we started, you were like, you were like, 1v3 Rock fan would, li- would like to know the difference between, you know, like, we have all the answers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he'd like to know the difference between this and this. No, no, um, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you well, our opinion. What he, <laughs> what he really said was, like, can you guys talk about the difference? I just love that that's what you said. He's like, he'd like to know so, the difference. Like, Yeah, this is true. Anyway. See, the difference is about 25. So, kind <laughs> of just subtract... No. So Vince, um, let me ask you the really hard question. Here it comes. Would you consider yourself a fanboy? You see, in my head, I'm not. But uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, somebody else wouldn't deem me to be a fanboy. I'd say the same thing about myself. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that we have um, that we have at times uh, in our various programs um, kind of also talk about fanboy as a negative uh, kind of. Excuse me, kind of thing. You know what I mean? A, fa- a fanboy being someone who is um, who is obsessed and kind of um, a-, a little bit out of touch with things, as opposed mm-hmm. to somebody who's simply um, um, you know uh, uh, very involved in a f- in a fandom. I think those are certainly two different things. Um, but yeah, also there's just different degrees of things. So people could totally look at you and your Punisher collection and say, "Dude, fanboy." You see, that's the thing is that uh, in in my head, the difference between a fanboy and an enthusiast is that. Uh, a fanboy is an indiscriminate consumer. He just takes it all in. Like, for example, I was reading my Punisher comics, and, uh, uh, you know, as I've said before, I collect the Punisher. The Punisher's in something, so I buy it. And uh, the problem with that is I buy a lot of crap. So, and when I say a lot of crap, yeah. I don't mean a lot of items. I mean a lot, I read a lot of bad stuff now. And uh, stuff that came out back in the 80s, back in the 90s. I, I flip through it, I'm thinking, why am I doing this to myself? And then I get to the next issue and it's really good. And I say, oh yeah, I remember. When I found out that Vince collects absolutely every issue that ever had the Punisher in it, uh, we we uh, we came to um, in a, uh, a, a pact, somewhat of an unspoken pact, that he no longer can make fun of me about Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you like Star Trek? Yeah. <laughs> you buy nothing but bad things. <laughs> You know, for a while there, it's what it seemed like. My poll, I started hating everything on it, so... Dude, I, I had to listen to you talk about it. It felt like it felt like that to me, too. Like uh, I had to, you know, decrease the ranks. Well, remember back, remember back uh, before we had so many programs when we were doing the, the, the blogs, and you had Vince's blog, you had you had a half an hour, it was nothing, but here's all the comics I read this week. This was bad, and this was bad, and so was this. And you know what they all had in common? They were the Punisher, and I love him, but this is bad. Yeah. That was the whole thing. You see, we even had a fan at one point that... Uh, Sent me a message that said, "Hey, can you tell me what's what, what's good out there so I don't read a bunch of bad Punisher?" He said, "What's good?" So I sent him back a message and said, "You don't read these things." But oh, so now you're turning your 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 uh, your fanboyism into a uh, public service. That's right. <laughs> you see, in my no, I've done that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I thought that's what geek pollution was. No, that's totally cool. Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, uh, I do that with, on uh, on late night all the time. Uh, you know, you know, we're all all re- and I'm like, like you know what? I had to pay three dollars for this, but it wouldn't be much of a show if I bought nothing but good things. <laughs> That's, that's a good point. I'm like, I don't know about Fear at, Shel- Fear, Fear at Shelf. I don't, I don't know about Fear itself, but... That sounds like a parody coming up to me. I should probably tell people if it's any good or not. Fear at Shelf. <laughs> Things that scare my appliances and furniture. 
<laughs> but uh, so let's look at the similarities between a fanboy and an enthusiast, real quick. Absolutely. So uh, they're both going to be passionate about something that they particularly enjoy. And uh, if we're talking about oh, and passion is never bad. Yeah, let's passion's say that. not bad. Passion is something that you just have a love for something. And if you're a geek or, or uh, some people prefer the word nerd, whatever. Sure, sure. If, uh, if you were a consumer of <laughs> pop culture, uh, you may automatically be factored into this fanboy type of thing just because you don't like literature. Right, Oh, sure. you like science fiction. Okay, whatever. But uh, you see, the point is... Although I consider myself to be, uh, at least on some level, someone who likes both of those things. Yeah, you know. You know. There, there's certain class of literature I like, you know what I mean? And there's, and there's nothing to say that uh, they don't blend genres. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think a lot of the time, it's just that things are more complicated than labels yeah. can, 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 can make them. That's why they're labels. Labels exist to, 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 to make things more easily classified. Yeah, so and you can walk into a bookstore and find what you're looking for. Yeah, the problem <laughs> is that, right, right, those are useful labels, but the, <laughs> but, the, but the problem with social labels is um, that, that we... That we end up developing these kinds of problems, and we have to talk about things like like what is what is a fanboy versus you know you know a connoisseur or whatever. You see, I think if you're worried whether or not you're a fanboy versus an enthusiast or a connoisseur or buff, if you're worried about the difference, then uh, you're worried about the wrong thing. What you that's, should be worried good. about is if you're a socially adequate person, oh, okay. because uh, also a, a thing that gets tied to a geek or, or a problem that gets often tied to geeks, which uh, we're going to use fanboys as the ultimate label for these people, is uh, fanboys will have this inability to socialize with uh, common folk. <laughs> they, or at least that's what the, yeah, yeah the, they, that, that's what the label gives us. Yeah. That's what the label gives us. If we're going to use it as a negative term, we have these fanboys who just indiscriminately love whatever it is. They have this massive amount of knowledge, and... Uh, they have no way of communicating with other people. Well, yeah, and, and, and you're right. And I think, and I, and I think the, the the reason that often is is because they alienate people because of their fandoms. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, and once again, we're talking about this. We're not talking about any any specific people. We're we're, we're we're really talking about this on on kind of a grand scope. Where okay, the stereotypical idea of a fanboy. What what are we what do we think of when we think of that? And I think and I, and I think um, um, those kinds of people. What you end up with is the reason they don't have. Um, the reason they don't have a really good social life or why they're not real good in social situations is because, and of course I say this all the time, this is kind of my be-all, end-all for everything, um, is they're just not objective enough to um, see uh, the things that they like as um, just simply their, their opinions on what they like versus everyone should be me. And I think that happens with, 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 with folks, right? Where, um, you, know, you know, I love this and this and this, and I won't socialize or have no interest or no respect in, 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 in or of anyone who doesn't like these things that I like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had conversations with people who get, like, really upset. I'm not going to say violently, but they get ridiculously upset over the idea that you don't like something that they like. And, uh, so, okay, sure, I don't like uh, Superman Returns. A lot of people didn't. So why are you angry? That type of thing. So, uh, if you're a guy who goes into his basement and wants to collect everything and, and read or, and watch everything that has to do with, uh, with, give us a, give us a franchise, Spider-Man, what do you say? So, if you like everything, absolutely, that has to do with Spider-Man and all you can talk about is Spider-Man and you get out there in public and, uh, you say something to an X-Men fan, Spider-Man, 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 suddenly you sound like a Pokemon who, who is Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I choose you, Spider-Man. Spider, Spider-Man. I choose you, Spider Chew. That Ooh. sounds that sounds like a horrible flavor of tobacco. <laughs> there, are, there are at least three people in this video who just called you a fanboy for thinking of that, man. Yep, that's true. But you see, here's the deal. And fair. <laughs> I like canaries and carnivals. I mean, that was a really funny joke, and I absolutely <laughs> loved it. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I think the point here is. The, the difference between a fanboy is a person who is indiscriminate, and uh, a connoisseur is a person who is, uh, who is both knowledgeable and has the ability to discriminate between what's good and what's bad. So, or at least he has the ability to choose for himself. He doesn't let his uh, fandom dictate to him what's good. I mean, 
I mean, even if you're, say, I suppose you could potentially be a sort of an elitist fanboy. Even. Oh, sure. Yeah. Say, like, uh, just because it's on... Or you could be a fanboyish connoisseur. I mean, these things, you know, <laughs> it's complicated. Just because it's on the uh, top 100 comic books that you need to read or one of the top 100 movies sure. doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you need to think it's good. Just because it's one of the considered one of the greats doesn't mean that you have to say, oh, yeah, I loved that movie. That's a perfect point, and I think it's really difficult for people sometimes. Um, I, I think I, I would go as far as to say that I have had a difficulty with this before, um, where, uh, where it's difficult to separate um, your opinion from the public opinion. Mm-hmm. And um, it's especially in the day and age we live in now, it's so difficult to look at something without um, knowing what the masses feel about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever <laughs> on, on, on Geeks Not Nerds, we lost the poster. I'd say after a couple of years, that's a good one. And hey, we'll take care of it later. As for now, enjoy the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that happened. Anyway. Man. Stupid Ninja Turtles with no sticky powers. Man, <laughs> it's just, it's all falling apart. See, if that was a Spider-Man poster, it would have stuck to the wall. But anyway, <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever have that problem, Vince? Oh, yeah, you know, it comes down to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been trying to watch the uh, top 100 movies from AFI's list, and uh, I haven't necessarily, uh, I've seen about half of it. <laughs> so, uh, I recently watched Clockwork Orange. I, I think, I think we're good. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> No, I recently watched *The Clockwork Orange*, and uh, of course, just about everybody regards Kubrick with, the, with well, with the highest regard. They think he's uh, every film he touches, short of *Eyes Wide Shut*, is gold. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when it comes to *A Clockwork Orange*, people consider it one of the greatest movies, and there's a lot of people that consider it, uh, you know, a great science fiction movie. So, I thought it was interesting, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a great movie. I know I had my own opinion on it. I, I developed a. Yeah, I, I could review the movie if I wanted to, but I, I think this is probably the wrong venue for that. Right, right. But the, the point is, is that after I saw that, I thought to myself, well, you know, maybe, maybe I don't need to be thrilled by the top 100. Maybe the number one movie, it, maybe it's okay that the number one movie by this particular committee who put this list together is not my favorite movie. And maybe it's okay that my favorite movie is critically, in my opinion, not the best movie. Yeah, once again, it's about being objective. Uh, people should be able to, you know, uh, not like something that is considered important uh, if it just doesn't appeal to them. And uh, that, that that needs to be okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I understand why Dark Knight Returns is so influential. I don't like it as much as a lot of people do. Um, that's Did you bla- prefer Begins? That's blasphemy in the comic book world. Did I prefer yeah. Begins? What do you mean? Did you prefer, uh, you said Dark Knight? Oh, wait, comic book. Yeah, Dark Knight, yeah, Dark Knight Returns, pal. I'm following you. Um, I was still dazed over my Ninja Turtles poster falling over. Yeah, no, I think. So. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, but uh, no, 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 your Dark Knight Returns. You know, you know, it's become such an iconic kind of thing. And um, I go back and look at it, and and I was I was thinking about this the other day. I look at the uh, you know the things that have become like 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 really famous and well known and, and iconic and in you know Dark Knight Returns visually. You know the the um, you know the the, the the cover with you know um, Batman getting struck by or he doesn't get struck by lightning. Lightning striking behind Batman, Batman behind, while yeah. he's diving off of a building. Right, and um and, and I and I and I'm asking myself this question because I don't know if I had not seen that before I read it and known that it was because it, you know it's hard to know anything about comics and not have actually at least seen that, even if you've never read the book. Of course, I had seen it around before, and so I don't know if I would have found that as impressive. And I just I was wondering about it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like would that have would that have struck me that hard? Not the bolt of lightning, but the, <laughs> <laughs> but, well, the book know, would leap out of his hand, <laughs> smack into his face. Would, would some of those iconic images that that just being an example would they have would they have left out off the page of me um, mm-hmm. if it if it if it hadn't been for the fact that I knew they were supposed to. You see, even um, there, you, you know, you know, you know, Watchmen for some people. Um, I read Watchmen before I knew it was it, it was such a big thing. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like a, a friend of mine back in college um, said, "Hey, you you really need to read this." But he he uh, he didn't mention that. Oh yeah, and also, um, you know, it's it's one of the best uh, you know selling rap novels of all time, and mm-hmm. um, it's it's been on um, you know it's been on lists of best novels, um, uh, you, you know, novels. And I, I didn't know that when I read it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just read it, and, um, and 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 I loved it. And so I mean, um, you, you know, it's just really it's just really interesting to see you know which, which things you know hit you. Uh, versus what things are actually, you know, popular when it's supposed to hit you. You know, I had the, a similar experience. I read Dark Knight knowing that it was supposed to be one of the big hoo ha things, and, and uh, I came out of it, I was like, you know, that was good. 
I, or Dark Knight Returns. I mean, I suppose it originally was just called Dark Knight. Right, right. Being in the Batman line. But uh, when I read Dark Knight Returns, I thought, you know, that was good. It was okay. I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't groundbreaking for me because, of course, in this day and age, it's not groundbreaking. You go when it, <clears throat> excuse me, you go back to when it came out, and suddenly it is groundbreaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, personally, I think if something has a, a striking visual to it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it should be one of the greatest things ever written. It should be one of the greatest things ever seen. Well, a lot of times, influence is a big yeah. deal, and of course, and of course, that influences a lot of things. And um, you know, whether you like something or not, that's simply a matter of history. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason I say it's a similar experience is because, uh, you know, he didn't know Watchmen was supposed to be as big as it was when uh, when he read it. I did, and I really liked Watchmen. I I did know about uh, about Dark Knight Returns, and I was okay with it. But uh, and, you know, it's interesting. You walk into uh, a comic book store, and I've had ridiculously polarized conversations. I'll go into a comic book store and I'll say, you know, Dark, Re- Dark Knight Returns is okay, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the greatest thing ever. And they say, blasphemy, you're going to go to comic book heck. <laughs> and and uh, I walk into a com- that same comic book store and I said, wow, Watchmen was one incredible experience. That comic book was fantastic. And they say, ah, whatever, it wasn't that great. So, uh, I have these, like, strange experiences. It sounds kind of like that comic book store is comic book hack, <laughs> Hmm. Comic book hack. That's, <laughs> yeah, like, that's where people who are darned go. I think, I don't know. I think in this context, it's okay for you to say comic book hell, Vince. It's okay with me. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was really funny. That was really funny. Comic book Hades. Anyway, um... What, what's, what's our bottom line on the fanboy thing? I think that, you know, it's interesting to me, but the first thing I said, basically, is what sticks with me. A, a comic book, or not comic book, a fanboy is a person who has a, a, a broad knowledge base about a particular thing and is indiscriminate about, uh, about his, his consumerism, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and I like a, that. An enthusiast, a connoisseur, is somebody who is discriminate, but still has that broad knowledge base. He, he would effectively know the same things that a fanboy does, so therefore a fanboy is impressive in some way. It's just that uh, you can talk to an enthusiast. That guy is a person before he is a consumer. Yeah. I mean, you can talk... Did I say enthusiast? <laughs> I'm not sure. I <laughs> can, knew what you were talking about. You can yeah. talk to an enthusiast because he is a person before he is a consumer. Yeah, wow. I, I'm not sure I can add anything to that. I like that. Um, the, the only other thing I, I'm going to say is that I think I think sometimes um, fanboys can be um, you know a little obsessive compulsive. Mm-hmm. You know, a little, a little obsessive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching Geeks Not Nerds. Uh, if you have um, something you'd like us to talk about in a future video, be sure and leave that in the comments below. And also tell us what you think about uh, f- uh, uh, fanboys versus um, kind of connoisseurs and that kind of thing. Um, honestly, I, 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 hesitate, I, I hesitated to say a lot on this one, Vince, just because um, I don't like labels, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's one of the, and of course, you know, we call ourselves geeks, you know. So guess, <laughs> the irony. I guess true. that's a little ironic, but, uh, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you know, it's, it's un- it, can be, it can be kind of unfair to label people, you know what I mean? Uh, but, but um, you know, I know the kinds of of, 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 of people that um, you know I, I think are, are kind of you know um, socially inadequate and they could you know you know they could they could um, um, they could certainly get a little bit you know more socially yeah and I think these labels really thing. serve to try to separate people like the fanboys are irredeemable well you know a fanboy could potentially become an enthusiast oh sure yeah a lot of times if you want to keep a, applying the label why not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just a matter, of, a matter of maturity. I mean, I think you could just say that sometimes that a fanboy is an immature or enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, there years go by and uh, people change. If people can change in a story, they can certainly change in real life. That's not true. But uh, if people change in real life, they can certainly change in a story. That's true. <laughs> well, thanks again for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, Come reminding you to support your local comic book store. <laughs> We were just all kinds of messed up today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next time.